All right, everyone, let's do this. So thanks again for joining us today. Uh, looking at some of the participants out there, we see some familiar names, so hello. Uh, thanks for joining Zentail and SkewVault again. We're excited to talk to you about how to build a blueprint for e-commerce success. Uh, you know, it's funny, actually, we were just looking at an article this morning on how retailers and marketplace and brands, sorry, um, are growing in the marketplace. And one of the key takeaways from that article was how you know, sellers not only needed to just be omnichannel and, you know, have a .com, but work that way too. And so this, this topic couldn't be more timely. Uh, we will discuss how workflows can be more efficient. And then obviously that translates to saving you time and money. And then scaling your operations for growth is always a key takeaway for us and especially this presentation. Real quick, we'll just run through some housekeeping. So first of all, uh, hello, my name is Pauline and I'm here uh, on the Zentel team handling marketing. We are recording this webinar. We aim for it to be about 45 minutes and that includes the Q&A session at the end. Uh, depending on how you access this webinar, it could be at either the tools at the top or at the bottom of your screen. Um, if it's not there, if you hover over, it kind of should pop up. And then so please be sure to submit your questions. Uh, we'll definitely be handling questions at the end. Awesome. So what are we talking about today? Uh, here's everything we hope to cover under our, our agenda. Uh, Zentel will do a quick overview of e-commerce today talk through catalog management and order management. Um, we're excited to share a success story, a mutual customer with SkewVault and Zentail, uh, and we'll talk through some of the highlights there. And then kick it over to SkewVault to handle what is a WMS, right? Um, features of warehouse management and the all important seller rating. And then once again, we'll handle the questions and answers at the end. In terms of who will be speaking with you today, um, at Zentel, we have Michael Meck with us. He is our implementation manager and definitely one of our go-to e-commerce experts. He has guided many of our clients through their implementations um, and you know, various partners, especially and including SkewVault. On the SkewVault side, we are happy to have Elaine Rector join us. She is operations consultant there um, and has apparently become integral to the clients she helps, um, supporting them to both evaluate their warehouse management needs and creating the best success plan for scaling their businesses. So thanks for joining us, um, both of you today. Before we jump in, thought it'd be helpful to cover off on who is Zentail and SkewVault. So as a little background for those who may not be familiar, um, at Zentail, you know, we're, we're proud that we're viewed as the trusted five-star multi-channel management software. Uh, we help our clients with a central hub for syncing and managing their product data, inventory and orders easily, kind of the keyword there is easily. Uh, retailers and brands rely on us, on Zentail and our automation platform to seamlessly manage their business operations. Um, you know, we, our software works really seamlessly with SkewVault and their management technology platform, which helps, again, thousands of small and medium-sized e-commerce companies across the globe. Um, yeah, and they really help make their inventory uh, management more efficient, as well as optimizing their warehouse operations. So, all right. With that, I think it's time to kick it off first to Michael Mack. Thanks, Pauline. So, uh, we'll, we'll start off with just a quick intro as to what e-commerce looks like today. And really, as, as you guys know, uh, the majority and dominant player is Amazon. Uh, but there are a lot of other marketplaces that are coming up and really starting to compete and take some market share away from Amazon, including uh, the ones you see here, Walmart, eBay, Google Express, et cetera. Um, so being not only present on those marketplaces, but investing in growth there is really important. And along the same lines, being able to be truly multi-channel and doing that efficiently is really valuable. And that's why we're talking about that today. Um, very similarly, being able to, uh, or some of these marketplaces like Walmart and Google too, um, really don't want you to be using a fulfillment source like FBA. So making sure that you have strong uh, fulfillment capabilities in your own warehouse and inventory capabilities there is also becoming increasingly important. Cool, so to kick things off, uh, we'll talk a little bit about uh, catalog and listing management and making sure that we're doing that in a scalable way to be able to sustain our multi-channel company. 
So first of all, the building blocks of catalog management. Um, at the bottom of the pyramid here, we have your required fields. So those are things like your item identifiers, your price, um, other basic info like a title and description, for example. Um, and these, these required fields really just get your listing up on a marketplace and available for purchase. Um, it's really a, a bare bones model where you're going to have to most likely uh, bring your prices down if you really want to be able to compete with any of the other listings that you might be up against there. Um, so taking it one step higher and being able to rely more on a, a more comprehensive listing is including structured data in those listings. Uh, so that's things like grouping your products together, um, so you, including a variation theme or pivot attribute, also adding some basic item specifics, so things like size and color. And that's also where we start to get into things like SEO and making sure you have high image quality is in the structured data component. Um, and then, then at the top of the pyramid, when you've really uh, reached the peak, is when you're including enriched data on your listings. So this is where you're starting to use really unique item specifics. So something that um, isn't just size and color, but is applicable specifically to the category that you're selling in. Um, also using things like special formatting on your listings to make them more appealing to the buyer. So whether that's um, using HTML in your descriptions or an eBay template, um, that's, that's where we started to get into that, as well as any sort of custom fields that apply either on the channel um, or on your own web store. Well, so those are the building blocks of catalog management, um, but to, to do it in a truly scalable way, we need, we have several different considerations here. Uh, so one is, is your process systematic? Meaning that if two different people on your team are creating a listing, is it going to have the same quality across the board? Um, and part of the reason that's really important, we talked about having good comprehensive listings, um, but brands are becoming increasingly more recognized in e-commerce. And so people want to trust the brand and the seller that they're buying from. And if some listings are high quality, some listings are low quality, um, that does affect the buyer's trust in your brand. So making sure that you have a systematic process that maintains a high standard across your listings and catalog is really important. Um, and to work our way around there too, anything you can do in an automated way is going to help, of course, in being scalable. Uh, so anything you can do in a bulk actions um, method or being able to infer a value. So if you select a category like men's, um, knowing that the department should be men's as well, and then just general automation rules, um, being able to assign certain values based on uh, other filters that you might apply to your catalog and things like that. Um, and then continuing on to the new listing process. Uh, so very similar, very similar to being systematic. Um, it should be efficient. Two people should be able to create the same listing at a high quality and high standard. Uh, but some other considerations too are you don't want to retrace your steps and go back and enter more information and almost feel like you're creating the same listing two or three times before it actually gets published. Um, so having a good way of knowing what's required in your catalog to get a listing up uh, and different channel requirements is really valuable here. And along the same lines too, you wanna make sure that in that new listing process, you're including enriched data. Um, so you don't wanna be hunting around for what those fields are gonna be. You wanna make sure that whatever system you're using to manage your catalog makes those attributes available to you and they're easy to find, fill in in bulk, and make sure that you have good comprehensive listings up. Uh, and then the last thing here is just avoiding duplicating efforts. Um, so you don't wanna have to enter the same info on multiple channels or select a category five, six, seven times just to get your listing up. Uh, being able to map any of that information and avoid duplicating your effort there, really valuable. Um, you also wanna consider different channel variations, which we'll talk about in just a second. Cool, so uh, to revisit bulk action a little bit too for some pro tips, um, you want to make sure that your catalog management system has import export tools as well as bulk actions. Um, a good example of that here is on the right hand side where in bulk we're assigning um, a shipping policy to all Nike brand products. Uh, very similarly, we mentioned inferred values. So if you know something is a, a men's product, being able to assign that the, de the department is men's. Um, and then also just making it easy to list. Uh, and then moving into avoiding duplicating efforts. And this is what we were uh, just talking about on the last slide too. Um, if you have a product that varies by, or a listing that varies by the number of products in the package, so a multi-pack quantity, um, some channels like Amazon do allow you to use multi-pack quantity as a variation theme, uh, but a channel like Walmart only, or it does not allow that, and they also call it item package quantity. Um, so in that case, you're either going to have to create the listing twice, once for Amazon, once for Walmart, um, or you should use a system that is able to either map that 
in an automated fashion for your account. Um, or you could just use something like size if you want to take an, an easy route there uh, and just use size as a multi-pack quantity. So that way it's um, multi-channel universal as opposed to having to worry about what each channel is going to allow you to use. Uh, very similarly there too, you don't want to have to, if you're selling light bulbs, you don't want to have to enter the watts field for each channel. I'm going to enter that, you know, five, six, seven times. Uh, so don't waste time typing that twice. Make sure that you're able to map the watts field to, in this case, watts on Amazon, bulb wattage on Walmart, bulb wattage on Amazon, as well as any other channels that you might be selling on. And what we're really striving for here in a catalog management system is not only something that's scalable and efficient, but also just makes your buyers really confident that they're buying the right product. Um, so you want to make sure that you are getting to the level of using enriched data, that they don't need to leave your listing to do more research, and you're also including SEO on that listing. And then just make e-commerce simple. So anyway, you can automate it. Um, consider your workflow in the system that you're using is going to be really valuable. And that's what's going to give you a listing like what you have on the right-hand side here. So something that's appealing to the eyes. Um, you can confidently purchase or know that you're purchasing the right thing here. Um, and just has a lot of different item specs and details that make you feel good about buying that. Um, and on the other, other end of the spectrum, uh, if your buyers are not confident um, and they end up with a product like this, where you know, maybe there uh, should have been more item specs or more detail in the title here, um, they're going to, of course, cancel or return that product, probably not buy from you again. And that's something that we wanna make sure that we're avoiding. Cool, so to uh, jump right over then from a scalable catalog management system to something that uh, really helps you build a blueprint for a scalable e-commerce order management system. The building blocks are, uh, and this uh, is not going to be a surprise for you, but orders coming in, orders going out, um, and then to complete that cycle, being able to analyze and do accurate forecasting. Um, a bit different from catalog management here in the sense that Doing the basics really well is important, uh, but backing that with really powerful analytics and forecasting um, is what really takes your e-commerce order management to another level. Um, so to break these down a bit more too, when orders come in, um, we're, we're not just talking about the buyer clicking uh, purchase. We're also talking about making sure that your listings have the right shipping policies. Um, you're acknowledging the order on the channel, uh, which we'll talk a bit more about, as well as routing the order to the appropriate warehouse and reserving that inventory. Um, and then when orders go out, uh, again, you want your warehouse workflow to be streamlined and we'll hear a lot more about that from SKU Vault in just a bit. Um, and then also just that you can update your order statuses back to the channels in a really efficient way. Um, and then similarly for analytics and forecasting, um, you guys are familiar with a lot of these metrics, uh, but the defect rate, on-time delivery, you of course want to avoid back orders, uh, but then you, you also on the more positive side, want to be accurately forecasting your inventory. And SkewVault's going to talk a bit more about those metrics too in just a bit. Uh, we talked about some of the building blocks here and making sure that they're scalable and efficient. Um, so to dive a bit more into that, again, efficiency is king for orders. You want orders to come in, orders to go out. Um, so making sure that you have sorted pick lists, your warehouse workflow is really efficient is going to be great. Um, you also want to update your orders on time. Um, and what I mean by that is you, of course, don't want a, a late order or to mark an order as shipped later than necessary simply because your system wasn't efficient um, or doing that in a timely manner. Um, a, a good example of this, too, is I'm currently working with a seller who does Seller Fulfilled Prime, and they want their Seller Fulfilled Prime only to apply on weekdays, not the weekend. And their current method for that is to... Uh, just change the location where they allow Seller Fulfilled Prime to South Dakota over the weekends and cross their fingers and hope no one from South Dakota orders their product. Um, but an opportunity we gave them is to use our bulk actions tool to essentially automatically update which products they're offering Seller Fulfilled Prime on in a really efficient, you know, one-click manner uh, so they don't have to cross their fingers and just hope that nobody's forcing them into two-day shipping over a weekend. To move into how your order management system should be systematic and automated, um, you know, there, there's some basic routing preferences that apply, and we'll see those in a couple slides here. Um, but on top of that, too, in some cases, you're going to want custom routing preferences based on, you know, the, the weight of the products or which warehouse they're located in geographically. Um, so those are a couple of considerations there, too. And different channels do allow different methods of assigning these routing preferences or uh, shipping policies that apply. 
which is that next line there. Um, and then the last component to being systematic and automated is acknowledging orders on time. Um, so as, as you guys are likely familiar, channels like Walmart and Jet look for an order acknowledgement within 15 minutes. And if you fail to do so, uh, they could potentially cancel the order. Or if it's a competitive listing, uh, as, as Jet does, they'll give it to the next uh, seller in line. Um, so that's a really easy way to lose sales just because you're not using a system that acknowledges your orders in a timely manner. Uh, so that's where automation and having a good system comes into play. And then last component here is getting the basics right. And that's really what uh, SKU Vault's gonna go into um, as the, the industry experts there. And this is just a good example of why your routing preferences are important. Uh, you don't want any of your orders to be like that guy on the top. Um, he's gonna end up with a lot of extra effort and also uh, really playing catch up instead of leading the pack. So to wrap up the conversation on order management uh, briefly here, um, as we talked about in the, the setting of e-commerce, Really important time right now to invest in your own fulfillment capabilities. So having a good system in your own warehouse to manage not only your orders, but your inventory, um, as Skuvaldo will talk about in just a bit. Um, so having, and having the right shipping policies on your products is gonna boost sales. Um, buyers are spoiled and two day shipping is the buzz right now. Um, so being able to support that is really important. Similarly, the up and comers uh, in e-commerce don't like FBA. So Walmart might suspend you um, and channels like eBay, Google, and Jet don't consider Amazon logistics uh, valid tracking 100% of the time. So again, if you can maintain your own fulfillment capabilities, that's really valuable. And then, yeah, it's, it's all about the basics. Orders come in, orders come out, but uh, it, it sounds easy, but there's a lot of different considerations to make sure that that happens efficiently. And that's where a system like SkewVault is, is really helpful um, and also backing that with powerful uh, analytics here. Cool. So just a, a quick success story here. So uh, this is a client, Shively Sporting Goods, using both Zentail and SKU Vault. Um, we'll talk a bit here in just uh, how they're using each system. Um, so Shively was started in 1968 by Bob and Virginia Flanders, um, and they provide apparel, equipment, and uniforms for all different sports teams. Um, and you know, as, as they started to gain momentum in e-commerce, they wanted to streamline and simplify their operations. Uh, so they joined SKU Vault in 2011. Um, as we were talking about, really looking to reduce their reliance on FBA uh, and increase their own capabilities in their own warehouse. And then also joined uh, Zentail in 2015 to help expand their multi-channel presence and listings. And that had some great results for them. Um, we can see here in the baseline, 75% Amazon sales, uh, really, really relying on Amazon. Um, also compared to their sales over the next couple of years, um, significantly lower. Uh, so in, in the next year, once they invested in their own fulfillment and warehouse capabilities, um, increased their multi-channel presence, they saw a 360% increase in revenue. Uh, we're now on 50% more channels and also now just 44% reliant on Amazon. So this is, this is great. They're already more than half their sales are off Amazon. Uh, and that trend continued in the following year. So continuing to increase sales and multi-channel presence um, while also reducing their reliance on Amazon. And on the flip side of that, so in their own, part of the reason they were able to do this is in their own warehouse, they were able to support their merchant fulfillment capabilities and inventory tracking in a really efficient manner. Um, so initially they were 45% reliant on FBA for all of their shipments. Uh, that went down to 44% in the following year that we were just referring to. Um, and now actually uh, just a year later, they're down to just 7% FBA fulfillment which means that 93% of their orders and inventory updates are coming out of their own warehouse. Um, so to talk a little bit more too about how uh, this company and just companies in general are, are able to achieve um, such high performance in their own warehouse, we're going to hand that off to Skewball. Awesome. Mike, thank you. Uh, great info, great tips. It sounds like half the battle there is about having a plan, you know, covering off the basics, but then really being able to play with the big dogs with uh, higher level uh, data, order flows, et cetera. So perfect, yes. Uh, we're gonna kick things over to Elaine right now. Um, and she's gonna go over the essentials of warehouse management. And you know, we talked about this earlier, but the, the seller ratings, which is huge. So um, Elaine, take it away. Thank you both. So I'm gonna start off with just the basics um, by asking ourselves, what exactly is a warehouse management system? Well, at a very high level overview, a warehouse management system is a software solution designed to handle day-to-day -day warehouse operations with complete 
visibility. Some basic building blocks of a WMS include real-time quantity syncing. This is going to make overselling on your channels virtually impossible. You're also going to need real-time access to inventory levels and locations. This is going to enable warehouse workers to find their products in a fraction of the time that they're typically used to. Another imperative feature is going to be transaction reporting. All transactions in your WMS need to be recorded and stored for a higher level of quality control on orders. And a final piece would be barcoded scanning. Um, that's going to speed up the process and allow for less user error. Next, we'll cover some of the imperative features of a WMS. Firstly, demand planning and forecasting is imperative because it enables you to make smarter purchasing decisions. Reporting features in empower WMS users to make informed purchase and ordering decisions based on their own sales history. It can also be on certain reporting features such as minimum or maximum order quantities, supplier lead times, supplier quantities, and costs. Um, with smarter reporting options, WMS users can increase the accuracy of replenishing stock to multiple warehouses. They can see user accountability in real time. You'll be able to view visibility of quantities and transaction changes, and also when to place those purchase orders to, supply, to those suppliers. Um, having that real-time forecasting based on sales history or any other metrics means that you never have more or less product than what you need to sell. Another imperative feature is going to be the integration dynamics. A WMS integrates with the e-commerce software you need to build a well-rounded business. Here are a few ways your WMS integrations can work to store inventory information all in one place. Um, Real-time quantity syncs and the use of buffers reduce the chance of an oversell. Buffers are a way you can push false quantity to a marketplace, whether it be less or more than what's currently available in your warehouse. So if you're preferring to push what's less than what's available to create that sense of urgency, that's an imperative feature there. Or if you're interested in pushing more quantity than what you actually have or pushing quantities as they're incoming on a purchase order, those things need to be able to be done in your WMS. Um, those real-time quantity sinks, again, um, reduce that uh, chance of an oversell. And the WMS has to have functionality to pull orders and order costs in from the marketplace and be able to provide that accurate reporting information against it. Another imperative feature is going to be to eliminate human error with uh, some kind of quality control, whether it be at the point of picking or at the point of actual packing. Um, you need to ensure that every order goes out correctly with the correct product and quantity of that product. You should be able to utilize a QC history report to get visibility on what's going out. That's also going to avoid missed picks and damaged items. And then it'll enable you to reduce customer service costs. Each transaction in your WMS should be tracked and timestamped so you can spend less time reconciling incorrect orders. And of course, a higher order quality means more happy customers, therefore better reviews and more sales. Your WMS should also offer a feature for organized cycle counting. Um, we recommend doing cycle counts at least once a month to maintain accurate inventory levels at all times, and a WMS should offer a streamlined scanning-based workflow to accommodate this. Um, over here at SKU Vault, we do have many of our customers who will start off um, you know, shutting down for a couple days or shutting down for a weekend in order to get those cycle counts. Um, but with SKU Vault, you, know, you wouldn't need to do that anymore because it would uh, have that cycle counting feature available. Um, cycle counts are going to give you control of your inventory so that you know how much inventory you should have versus how much you actually have in the warehouse. Another imperative feature are going to be dynamic locations and location routing. The WMS user should be able to define their own business rules for where items belong with dynamic location functionality to be able to also place them where they fit. Uh, you can save time with dynamic location sorting by creating customized pick routes, um, even those that can change in real time, um, tailoring product locations to accommodate the location sorting, and your business rules should always be able to be applied so that the user is always routed in the most logical location by SKU, but also by individual business rules. Another imperative feature here is going to be a streamlining the pick, pack, and ship process. So the, we need to minimize uh, errors with those automated features such as digital and paperless picking, quality control while picking, or the inverse, which would be picking while quality control. 
Um, many operations don't require a scan at each point in the fulfillment process. A true WMS should offer the uh, opportunity for flexible workflows, which allow as many or as few touch points as needed for your exact business roles. Uh, it also needs to be able to pull in orders from the shipping platform. This is really important that your WMS offers this functionality uh, so that the shipping labels and packing slips can be printed from within that WMS without having to navigate over to another system. Of course, your WMS should offer you the functionality to manage stock levels. It needs to be able to sell not only finished assembled goods, but any raw materials that make those up as well. So kitting should allow the users to manage stock levels in ready-to-ship kits or as part of raw component goods, um, visibility into the inventory locations and quantities, even including back stock and reserve locations, and of course that multi-warehouse visibility. That's important for you to be able to view quantities in multiple merchant warehouses, channel-fulfilled warehouses such as Amazon FBA, and of course vendor feeds if that's necessary. And next, we'll cover how a solid fulfillment process can increase your seller performance ratings. As we know, um, most consumers check product reviews before deciding to purchase. Ecom sellers need a way to boost those seller ratings, get more positive reviews, and win the buy box. Um, so how can you do that? Well, you can do it by shipping out quality orders in a timely manner. Um, better forecasting means you always have the products that you need in stock. So uh, for example, you should be able to ship out quality orders on time with quality control, customized pick lists, better forecasting, and a streamlined pick, pack, and ship process. The WMS has to have functionality to ensure that each user is picking the correct product and amount of products in each order. Combined with that streamlined picking and packing process, the orders are shipped out more quickly than ever. And that's it. Perfect. Great. Uh, Elaine, thank you. Um, all right. So clearly you guys spoke about so many ways in which a WMS can help provide safeguards, which then all eventually translate to higher seller rating, which is, you know, again, very, very important. So thanks for covering off on that. Um, all right. So behind the scenes, we are just going to take a quick minute here to get everything ready for the upcoming Q&A segment. So, um, you know, we're only here today because of the great success seen by our mutual clients. Um, we've helped them to streamline workflows, as we've talked about, increasing team efficiencies, which everyone appreciates, and reducing errors. Um, so, yeah, that really all boils down to some fantastic growth, like we saw with Shively. Um, on the top of the page of the slide here, you see how SKU Vault has helped their clients um, and then how Zentel has also optimized and grown clients at the bottom of the slide with some um, success metrics there. Uh, you know, this is really from our clients understanding that working with the right partners who can facilitate this kind of scalable growth is key. Um, all right, Q&A, here we go. Let's see. Uh, one of the first questions that we have here is about, okay, can you explain a little bit more about an optimal picking and packing scenario? Yes, yeah, absolutely. So an optimal picking and packing scenario, it really is based off of what, uh, what you need as a client. Um, a lot of our clients are happy to start off on a smaller scale where they're using less touch points in SKU Vault. So really, they're just allowing those orders to flow in, allow SKU Vault to uh, reduce the quantity in that way, and it's really hands-off. Um, if I was going to talk about an optimal picking and packing scenario, um, I would have each of our users um, scanning at the point that they are picking. Their WMS should be able to, uh, to warn or prevent the user from uh, scanning an incorrect product. So they're scanning at the point of pick uh, as they're removing from the shelf, and then again at the point of packing as they're quality controlling each item. And then from right inside there, they should be able to uh, print an automated packing slip and or a shipping label at that time as well. Perfect. Okay. I was actually just about to ask um, another question that came up. If SKU Vault could generate custom packing slips and labels, and it sounds like the answer is yes, but if you want to kind of elaborate any there. Sure. So yes, the answer is absolutely. We can generate that. Um, we do have customized template options available for those packing slips and product labels. Um, so if you know you need your company logo on those, we can absolutely do that or specific SKU information without a doubt. Um, we also have the option to generate custom pick lists and purchase order templates if that's something that our users need. Interesting, awesome. Okay, 
Um, cool. It looks like we have a couple more for Zentail, and then hopefully we'll be able to kick it back to you, Elaine. But let's see, Mike, um, how can I figure out which variation themes are accepted by each channel? Cool. Yeah, great. And also potentially a, a tricky question. Um, so there's a couple, well, we'll bucket the answers into two different categories. One is reactive and one is proactive. Um, so a reactive way is trying to listen to the channel um, and seeing if you have any errors. Um, in Zentail, you would be able to see a listing error that says something along the lines of um, this pivot attri attribute is not valid. Um, please specify a different pivot, for example. Um, but we definitely prefer a more proactive approach. Um, so that's something that our success team and implementation specialists are going to focus on as they're building your catalog. Um, and essentially, the easiest way to do it is just to look at the channel's documentation for what category you're in, because um, those accepted variation themes do vary by category. Um, and usually it is just a handful once you get into it. So if you know that you're in a clothing category, for example, um, you can pull up that document, take a look at uh, the five or six different variation themes that are allowed on each channel, um, and then build your, your catalog accordingly. Um, but it is best to have someone who's uh, an e-commerce expert or familiar with that documentation to help you out with it. And that's where um, your implementation specialist can come in handy. Perfect, cool. Um, so this is one uh, that's started to come up recently. So thanks for whoever asked this. Uh, do you consider yourself a PIM tool, product information management? Yes, 100%. Uh, um, so Zentail is an industry leading tool for product information management or PIM. Um, and the reason for that is we, we looked at some of the building blocks of catalog management earlier with regards to required info, structured data, and enriched data. Um, and not only do we support each of those, um, but you also do it in a really high-performing manner. Um, and that's why we're not only a, a PIM tool, but also industry leading in that sense on, on top of some of the other functionalities that we provide. Um, okay. And that, thank you for that question. <laughs> Um, great. So we are just about here, but Elaine, I want to uh, send one more question back your way. There are a couple different ones coming in that are, you know, kind of roughly along the same lines. So maybe we can combine them into one. It sounds like people aren't really sure kind of when is the right time to sign on with the WMS, um, kind of before they scale up their warehouse um, as they're doing it. Um, and kind of maybe this is a second question, but um, how it works if you already have a process in place to then work with SKU Vault. Yeah, that's another great question. Um, they, uh, a couple of the signs that you'll typically see whenever it's time to start looking for a serious business class WMS is obviously going to be those oversells, inconsistency on orders, you know, incorrect quantity or uh, products that are in those orders, uh, products that they don't know what either what locations they are in or they just have locations with products that could be anything and everything. So really just that disorganization and dysfunction in the warehouse. Um, and then typically you will see uh, clients who have so many orders that they cannot fulfill them any longer in a timely manager, manage at a timely manner. So that's how they know that it's time to uh, go ahead and get a warehouse management system that will enable them to streamline some of those processes. And then to kind of play into that second question that you asked, um, again, in Ski Vault, there are many ways to do uh, kind of the same process, and we make that flexible on purpose for all different types of business models. And as you scale up, uh, users will find that they do need more touch points than what was originally intended. So there are many different flexible ways that we can plan that workflow uh, so that it kind of flows along with any processes that they might be married to already. Elaine, great and um, always good to know when it's time to grow, right? And grow with the right partners. So again, thank you everyone for joining us. Thank you, Elaine and Ski Vault uh, for joining us here today. Everyone, yes, so again, we will make sure that you get this recording um, so we can talk in the future. And then please be sure to reach out to us. Uh, our Twitter handles are there. Um, again, thank you for joining us. Have a good day. Looks like we can get it right at the 45 minute mark. So cheers. Enjoy the rest of your day, everyone. And Elaine, thank you again. Thank you guys.